With that, we bring in veteran Senator Joni Ernst from her home state in Iowa. Senator, good to see you. We appreciate it. Uh, give us a sense, at what point does the United States almost have to answer the call of the Ukrainians who are fighting so bravely? Yes, thank you, Leland. And we should be stepping up. Just as you heard from Senator Dick Durbin, we should be providing more lethal aid to the Ukrainians. And we need to do that immediately. Uh, we are their one hope. There are other allied nations that are providing additional weaponry to the Ukrainians. But we also can do more. There are more sanctions that be, can be put upon President Biden. And we need to start ramping up American energy so that we can sever those economic and energy ties with Vladimir Putin and Russia. So there's many options left on the table. I wish President Biden would go full force and make sure that the Ukrainians understand that America stands behind them and with them. Um, of course, we will continue to bolster our NATO allies. We will not send troops into Ukraine, but we do need to let them know we are with them. Yeah. You know, Senator, we'll take them one at a time. You've got bipartisan support for additional lethal aid to the Ukrainians, but it's not yes. happening. It mm -hmm. can't happen without the White House. Has mm -hmm. the administration, That's and when correct. you've been when you've been in briefings with the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman, have they articulated the why of why they're not helping the Ukrainians? No, they have not. And why don't, why don't unfortunately, you think they have? the Senate is. Uh, the, the Senate is now in recess, so we are in our home states. So the briefings that we have been getting from the administration are unclassified briefings. And so they haven't provided us with the specifics on why they aren't stepping up and arming our, U our Ukrainian friends. So we will be back in session Monday. We will be demanding those answers. But by then, it may be too late as we see that Kiev is close to fall. Falling. Yeah, you make a great point that, that hours literally count here, which makes mm -hmm. some of the statements by the White House so curious. Uh, this is yes. Ned Price of the State Department explaining that he thinks the banking sanctions that the president has put in place will work faster than immediately delisting Russian banks. Take a listen. Oh, we don't, we don't have it. It was Ned Price. You, you may, I'm trying to understand. Is it almost as though the administration sort of doesn't care and wants this over rather than trying to really extract a price from Vladimir Putin? Well, that's the curious thing here is that there are so many options that have absolutely been left on the table. Now, President Biden, he knows how important this is because you see it coming from Democrats and Republicans that we need to bolster our friends, the Ukrainians. They are a democratic, sovereign nation being overrun by an autocratic thug that really hates the United yeah. States. And we see this being done in collusion with China, another one of our near peer adversaries. So, so, so you don't whatever President Biden is doing, it is not leading. We are allowing others to take the lead on a very yeah. serious situation, which will impact our pocketbooks and, of course, create insecurity for the people not only in Europe, but right here in the United States of America as well. Yeah, we were talking about how earlier, I don't know if you heard it, about how the person who's really leading here and ringing the alarm bells is Boris Johnson in the same way that Winston Churchill mm -hmm. rang the alarm bells about Adolf Hitler now 80 years ago. I get back to this point. If all of a sudden you start really ratcheting up sanctions on Vladimir Putin, really putting the thumbscrews to him. You start flooding the zone with lethal aid to the Ukrainians. You could have a long protracted war in Ukraine, this constant message and reminder of what had happened under Biden foreign policy. Is there any part of you that thinks the administration's just sort of allowing this to happen and slow walking it, uh, is slow walking the sanctions in order, in the hopes that it just gets over with, kind of like Afghanistan, we're done and hopefully the world moves on? 
Yeah, Leland, it's not just a little part of me. It's a lot of me that believes that the president is slow walking the assistance to Ukraine. And you may be on to something. He may want this over quickly. But unfortunately, the way it's over quickly is if Russia does take the entire country of Ukraine. And we leave those small bands of militia and resistance um, in Ukraine fighting the Russians. Um, what we do want to see is a free and democratic society in Ukraine. We cannot allow democracies to fall at the hands of these autocrats, um, and especially a thug like Putin. So again, we need to step up, make sure that we are becoming more energy independent, pushing energy into Europe so that we can strangle out the Russian hold on the European economy and uh, as well wean ourselves away from Russian oil. What we're doing is sending our dollars into Russia so that they can run over innocent Ukrainians. Um, this is a very unfortunate situation. And uh, honest to goodness, I can't tell you why President Biden isn't doing more, as we all believe he should be. Uh, the majority, again, of Republicans and Democrats believe this administration needs to step up to the challenge and start leading again. Uh, America is the strongest nation around this world. World, we need to start acting like it. You make a point that we're not. Uh, I, I, I want to button this down. Is, do you really, are we to believe that there is a part of the administration that is willing to hang the Ukrainians out to dry because it's more politically expedient than continuing to have a war in Ukraine for them? Is it that well, Machiavellian? Again, Leland, I, I would uh, make that uh, point is that why? Why are we not stepping up sanctions? Why are we letting Boris Johnson from the UK put sanctions on Putin? Why wasn't it the United States that stepped forward to do that first? We know that we need to put more pressure on the individual, the man, President Vladimir Putin. Um, and we didn't do that. We allowed the yeah, UK Senator, to Senator, lead got, in that. I only got about 30 seconds. Yeah, go ahead. The, 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 I only got 30 seconds. The president's got the uh, Supreme Court nominee fight coming up. Ketanji Brown Jackson uh, to fill the seat on the Supreme Court. Uh, how is the Ukraine debacle going to play into that? Well, again, it's expedient to just get it over and then focus on something else. Try and rally Americans around the Supreme Court justice. Um, it, it detracts away from inflation, high energy costs, every other foreign policy failure we've seen in this administration. You made the point the State of the Union is coming up very soon. Biden needs some wins. He needs some good things to talk about. So there you go. Yeah, well, we know what he's going to be talking about on Tuesday. We'll see you there. Ma'am, thank you. Enjoy the weekend in Iowa. Uh, God bless. Thank you, Leland. All right. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.